This is the new Rolls-Royce Spectre. It's the first electric production car Rolls-Royce has ever made, and it's the most luxurious EV the world has ever seen. In this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know about it. Anyway, I'm Mike Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. The new Spectre isn't a saloon like the Phantom and the Ghost, and it's definitely not an SUV like the Cullinan. It's a gigantic two-door coupe. But let's get one thing straight. The new Spectre is not a replacement for the old Wraith Coupe. For starters, it doesn't have a huge V12 engine like that car, but it's also a whole lot bigger. The Spectre is almost five and a half meters long and over two meters wide. That's more than 18 centimeters longer than the old Wraith and over 13 centimeters wider. It's the same length as a long wheelbase Mercedes S-Class Maybach. It's so big that Rolls-Royce calls it a super coupe. And because of all of this, it's better to think of the new Spectre as a successor to the old Phantom Coupe. In fact, Rolls-Royce says it took inspiration from the old Phantom Coupe when it was designing the new Spectre. I can see what they mean about the two-piece headlights, but nowadays they just remind me of cars like the BMW i7 and the XM. At least you won't have any trouble recognizing the massive Rolls-Royce grille. This is the widest grille ever fitted to a Rolls-Royce production car. It comes with moody backlighting too. This uses 22 individual LEDs to reflect light off the backsides of each vertical bar to give a soft, diffused effect. It's definitely a classier look than the sharp neon outline you get on a BMW i7's grille. That's not the only thing about the Spectre that's designed to be relatively subtle. The body has very few creases and hard angles, especially when you look at it from the side. There's a small Rolls-Royce badge in the front wing and some polished metal straights in the side skirt, but that's your lot. The paired back design really helps the massive 23-inch seven-spoke alloy wheels stand out. These are the largest wheels fitted to a Rolls-Royce coupe in almost 100 years. The minimalist design continues around the back. There aren't any fake exhaust trims here, and even the brake lights have been given a grey and white finish with two very skinny red stripes. This is so they don't clash with whichever bespoke colours future customers decide to paint their cars. Rolls-Royce has even made the whole rear body panel out of one piece of metal to get rid of as many shut lines as possible. This sheet of aluminium stretches all the way from the front windscreen to the rear bumper. It's the largest single panel ever made for a Rolls-Royce road car. That's all well and good though, isn't it? But what do you think about the new Spectre's design? Do you love it or do you think the Phantom is the best looking Rolls-Royce on sale? I'll put a pin comment down below and you can vote on whichever you think is your favourite looking luxury car. Go do it. Rolls-Royce has gone to pretty extreme lengths to make sure the new Spectre is as aerodynamic as possible. Its swoopy roofline helps this coupe slip to the air more easily than the upright Cullinan and Phantom. But there are plenty of other details that you wouldn't necessarily notice. The vanes in the backlit grille have been angled to reduce turbulence, and even the Spirit of Ecstasy herself was given a wind tunnel makeover to reduce drag. The Spectre's battery is mounted under the floor, and its flat bottom helps the airflow more smoothly underneath the car. All this means the new Spectre has a drag coefficient of just 0.25 CD. That's better than any other Rolls-Royce road car. All this means the new Spectre has a drag coefficient of just 0.25 CD. That's better than any other car Rolls-Royce has ever made. Some luxury manufacturers use their first electric luxury cars as an excuse to load upon gadgets and new features. For example, Mercedes gave the EQS a gigantic hyperscreen infotainment system and BMW fitted a huge 8K cinema screen in the back of the new i7. Rolls-Royce has taken a very different approach though. Check out the new Spectre's interior. It looks almost exactly the same as the cabin you get in a Rolls-Royce Ghost. You get the same air vents, physical controls, driver's display and central touchscreen as in that car. There are some very important differences though. You can ask Rolls-Royce to customise the graphics on the various screens to match the design of your car's interior. And the illuminated dashboard has a new Spectre pattern that's made up of 5,500 tiny backlit holes. You can also extend the starlight headlining down onto the car's doors for the first time in any Rolls-Royce. This is made up of 4,796 individual stars and you'll be able to personalise this to show any constellation you want, just like in the Ghost and Phantom. The Spectre is being put through the most intensive testing programme of any Rolls-Royce ever. By the time it goes on sale, various prototypes will have driven more than 1.5 million miles. It will take the average Rolls-Royce owner 400 years to drive their car that far. But Rolls-Royce isn't finished yet. It still has tweaks to make, so it hasn't confirmed a final range figure for its new electric car yet. Although, it said the finished car should have around 320 miles of range according to the latest tests. That's a pretty decent figure, but it's almost 70 miles less than the new BMW i7 can manage. That car has up to 387 miles of claimed range. The Mercedes EQS can go even further on a full charge. Mercedes says the longest range versions can drive up to 453 miles on a full battery. But how many Rolls-Royce owners are going to be driving more than 300 miles at a time? They probably have their own helicopters for trips like that. 
How does the new Spectre stack up against other new electric cars in terms of performance? Well, this new Rolls-Royce EV has an electric motor on each axle, giving it four-wheel drive. With these motors working at full whack, you get 585 horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque. That's enough power to accelerate this ultra-luxurious coupe from 0 to 62 miles an hour in 4.5 seconds. That's a few tenths of a second quicker than the new BMW i7, and it's only about a second slower than the top specification Mercedes EQS 53. What's even more impressive is that the Rolls-Royce Spectre manages to be that quick despite being one of the heaviest road cars you can buy. It tips the scales at 2,975 kilos. That's more than 300 kilograms heavier than Rolls-Royce's Cullinan. Let's put raw speed to one side for a second. You don't buy Rolls-Royce because it's sporty to drive, do you? You buy one because you want to waft about in silence, and driving the Spectre is probably going to feel like sitting in a sensory deprivation chamber. For starters, it comes with electric motors instead of an internal combustion engine, so there'll be almost no noise at all when you push accelerator. And Rolls-Royce has also found a way to use the Spectre's huge battery as a massive piece of sound deadening. And like most electric cars, the battery also helps make the car's chassis more rigid. Overall, the new car is 30% stiffer than any previous Rolls-Royce production car. In fact, it's so rigid, Rolls has managed to get rid of the additional wishbone dampers it fits to cars like the Ghosts. The Spectre just doesn't need them. You do still get adaptive dampers and active anti-roll systems though, and these help stop the car leaning in tight corners. They can disconnect when you're driving in a straight line to help the car deal with bumps more comfortably as well. Rolls-Royce's four-wheel steering system has also been retuned to help make the Spectre more manoeuvrable at low speeds and super stable when you're cruising. And the electronics that control all these systems have been completely redesigned to help them react even faster than before. The upside of this is that the Spectre can react to changing conditions more quickly to make sure it always feels as comfortable as possible to drive. The new Rolls-Royce Spectre comes with four seats like the old Phantom Coupe, and the car's huge size means there'll be ample space for tall passengers to get comfy in the back, and they shouldn't have any trouble climbing in because the Spectre has the largest doors ever fitted to a Rolls-Royce. Sadly, Rolls-Royce hasn't made use of the space in the bonnet because there's no internal combustion engine to store luggage. This is partly because of the wiring for the car's electrical systems, which take up all that room. But it's also because the huge grille and front wings mean a front boot wouldn't be possible to access elegantly, apparently. Well, that's what Rolls-Royce says. If you buy a new Spectre, you'll get access to the new Rolls-Royce Whispers app. It's so exclusive that you have to enter the car's VIN number just to use it. Anyway, this lets you do various things like monitor the battery level and send directions directly to the car's satellite navigation. You can also set up your personal profile and program the car to switch on the climate control at specific times so it's already warm or cool when you climb inside. This isn't particularly special these days, but Rolls-Royce does have one trick up its sleeve. You can save all your favourite settings and share them to as many Spectres as you want. That will be perfect if you have one car parked on each continent and you don't fancy setting them all up individually. You can order a new Rolls-Royce Spectre now. The starting price is from around £300,000, which puts it between the Cullinan and the range-topping Phantom in the Rolls-Royce catalogue. Although, as usual, the sky's the limit and you can spend untold amounts of money making a completely bespoke Spectre of your own with loads of custom touches. Get your order in now and your car could be ready for Christmas 2023.